Hi there, everyone. My name's Sean. I'm from a company called Disruption Works. And I'm Steve, also from Disruption Works. Good stuff. Today, we're going to be telling you all about chatbots, giving you everything that you need to know. I'm going to kick this off with a very quick explanation as to what chatbots are. So the term chatbot comes from two terms, basically chat, so i.e. conversational, and bot, which is essentially short for robot. So the idea is that you're using automation to have a conversation. So the basics are a chatbot is designed to provide immediate responses to inbound inquiries, and this can cover a plethora of journeys um, from services that you offer, answering FAQs, giving out general information, signposting people to various bits and bobs, but also capturing inbound inquiries as well. So perhaps where a chatbot can't answer the question, taking in the details to pass over to the team. Uh, Steve, have I got everything there or is there something you wanted to add into that? No, I think you're pretty, you've pretty nailed down the basics there. And um, we are trying to keep it basic on this. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff. So Steve, question to you, what are the benefits to a business of having a chatbot? Well, you're automating the conversation coming into your business. It's that simple. So uh, if you if somebody's actually trying to do a query for you into your business, then the chatbot can be your first point of contact to then automate a query coming in. It can answer some questions. It can uh, start some processes. Uh, it basically automated so it doesn't use your team to do those robotic tasks. Uh, so massive benefits of saving time for your team. Great stuff. And what are the benefits to the consumer of uh, a business having a chatbot? Well, of course, the chatbot is going to be 24 seven. So it means that the customer can then ask questions of your business at any time of the day. Um, and that can be on the website or in their social media. So it could also be in the, the channel that they prefer as well. You know, we WhatsApp, Facebook, all the rest of them. Uh, Insta being one of the growing spaces for this. Um, so basically they can ask the question get the answer quickly they can have a uh, a really simple um request answered there and then without having to try and pick the phone up get through to the business or uh, wait for an email response or something like that yeah and browsing habits have also changed that people are not really that interested in going five pages deep into your website no, not, at not all. the answer to primarily what are typically uh, simple and repetitive questions. Now, Steve, give us a quick example. Let's assume that I'm running a restaurant. You're thinking about coming. What could be the journey there? What could be the process? Well, um, doing these booking journeys is uh, is more complex than you think. You know, we all have uh, more touch points to a restaurant than you think. But also answering those simple questions. So do you do a good vegan menu or do you have halal uh, meat or whatever it may be? Those questions are going to be important before the booking happens. Yeah. Now, if the chatbot is there to answer those questions quickly, succinctly, and just go, yes, we have a really good range of vegan food. Uh, we've got at least X amount of uh, mains on the, on the menu or whatever the answer might be, that will then enable that person to book. There's no barrier. That, that barrier has been done. So then they can be pushed through to a booking journey. Good stuff. So that's helped them out there. And then are there downstream benefits of having a chatbot? Well, of course, if you can answer those questions after somebody's booked, maybe uh, that they're not sure about something about their booking or uh, a dress code within the bot, uh, within the um, restaurant, then they can ask the bot those questions and it can be a much more comfortable experience for the, that customer, you know, so they can turn up confident that they got the answers without having to wait on the phone for a simple query that they may not you know they, they could be hanging on hold for a while before somebody could help them which is a shame yeah and i think if you create a nice customer service experience for someone that's going to create some brand loyalty whether it's yeah. say, say, booking a restaurant or whether someone's looking to return an item because it arrived damaged if you yeah. can just do that really quickly that's going to create some nice brand loyalty yeah. now steve question for you now sometimes people confuse chatbots with live chat what is what is very briefly live chat what's the difference between that and a chatbot well live chat is a human agent on the end of the phone or end of the chat window uh, so that needs to be manned by a person and a chatbot is an automation so that's a bot answering the questions it's that simple so those are the differences between them 
So you've got a man the chat. So one of the restrictive elements of that, I assume again, that's not going to be a 24 seven service typically. No, no, very, very rarely. Uh, so the, that means the live chat will be offline at some point. Uh, you'll leave a message or whatever it may be, but the chatbot will be there 24 seven. Um, they can work in conjunction, um, right. but if you have live chat on its own, you're pretty much just keeping the queue you're moving the queue somewhere else. You, yeah. know, you haven't dealt with the queue. There hasn't, none of that's been automated. It's just that instead of phoning somebody, they're on the chat. And there are some benefits for doing live chat. It is a little bit um, quicker and easier to handle multiple conversations, but not super easy. So it's, a, you know, you can't handle lots of different conversations, but you can handle a few. Whereas the chatbot, of course, is automated. Yeah. Good stuff. And uh, how we talked a bit, a bit about chat. What's how do they even work? What, what's given me the answers? Well, there's lots of text um, and responses that are built into the um, uh, into a chat bot to answer questions on behalf of a business. Uh, we build out all those conversational flows uh, to make sure that a, uh, a somebody that asks and answering a query or asking a query gets an answer that's succinct and clear. Can be FAQs, so it can be just uh, common questions you're asked, but it can also be a process flow. Uh, flow. And what happens then is that the, uh, the they're programmed in to answer those questions, um, basically on keywords or phrases that will match the particular queries that come into a business. And and are our chatbots bespoke to each business? Pretty much, except there's some commonality. So if a restaurant um, is using the restaurant chatbot, for instance, there's a lot of common questions that a restaurant will have. You know, so there's going to be some core elements. My restaurant, or am I going to get just general restaurant answers? No, you'll get the exact answers that are relevant to your restaurant. Uh, but if you're using something that's smart enough to have already learnt the matching and the queries and the the machine learning part of those uh, questions that come in, then you're already streets ahead. But the answers will be very specific to your restaurant, of course. And you mentioned machine learning there. Another buzzword that people like to use is AI, so artificial intelligence. Do these things really exist within the chatbot? Well, AI is a bit of a, a misused tool uh, or a phrase, should we say. Um, there's not a lot of AI chatbots out there for the simple reason that AI needs to learn. It takes time. It's a very broad spectrum word as well. Machine learning is used within the chats and chatbots to understand um, language and for natural language understanding, to understand what is being asked, especially if voice is used. So the speech to text is used, but not um, not really because you need it to work from day one and yep. AI will take a while to learn, but that's no good for a business who just wants something working from day one. And you mentioned that, say, businesses like ours, for example, we build all the content on behalf of our clients. What are other options are there out there for people to get started? Uh, well, Google's probably the biggest uh, platform out there, so Dialogflow is a pretty big vendor. Um, they are uh, they're a very complicated platform, though, unfortunately. Uh, chat, um, chat conversation design and uh, that kind of side of, of what we do is really uh, it's quite an involved process. And we already have reports of people trying it themselves and coming to us eventually after they've tried it try to build their own because it's not like building a website it's it's a completely different flow of, of information and uh, we've learned a lot over the last few years in doing that so there are platforms out there that tend to be blank sheets of paper so you kind of need to start or you've got some very poor template um, but there are a few you know dialog flow is is cheap to start off with but it's not cheap in time and and if you get it wrong then this is where maybe bad stories about chatbots will come out. You know, if it's well designed, they're, they're really, really useful and they work very effectively. Yeah, so I think there's some some platforms out there with self-help guides and it's really yeah. on, the, on the business to have the expertise and understanding of how to create this stuff. 
which I guess nicely segues into my next question. Where, where have the, some, there is some stigma around chatbots and, yeah. and are they useless? Where does that come from then? Is that, that because people are trying to do it themselves? Yeah, or, or the early technology as well wasn't really fit for purpose. So everything's moved on. So one, uh, there's people like ourselves in the market that know how to design them. So they're done, you know, and uh, they'll work from day one. Um, but also, like you said, people have tried to do the, the build themselves and it's just not effective. It gives a poor experience and, and it's a it's a tricky one, really. You know, it's a shame if you then have that negative experience uh, because you can do more damage than uh, than than help, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of Facebook chatbots and stuff like that around you that can spin up. But again, they're, they're not a great experience and they're not not necessarily built superbly well. So, you know, you need to have that and that that makes a difference. Good stuff. So I'm going to quickly see if I can summarise everything that we've spoke about today. So chatbots provide immediate responses to inbound inquiries. For a business, this helps save time and money, of course, and helps you redeploy your staff in a more meaningful way. Customers uh, get a great customer service experience. There's different types of chatbot, but basically it's the content that you put in the chatbot is going to deliver the responses. So the better you do that, the, the better the customer experience. Chatbots are a great tool, but you can trip over yourselves if you don't know what you're doing and you do things in the wrong way. And this is what's created some of the stigma. Um, within organizations i think and maybe a chatbot's not that helpful it's a yeah. great tool but <laughs> like most things it's only as good as the information that you put in uh hopefully every, everyone found that really interesting and useful if you'd like to find out more about chatbots if you've got any questions or you'd like to see what the opportunities are for your organization do feel free to get in touch with us and we'd be more than happy to have a chat thanks very much cheers thanks a lot thanks. Bye, bye bye